नमस्ते नमस्ते टू ऑल माय डियर फ्रेंड्स माय डियर मास्टर्स माय डियर गास वेलकम टू दिस टुडे सेशन माय सिंसियर प्रणाम्स टू पीएसएसएम एंड माय बिलोड गुरुजी ब्रह्मर्षि पत्रीजी फ्रेंड्स टुडे टॉपिक इज सेवन बॉडीज सेवन चक्रास सेवन लोकास will be discussing this particular subject very important spiritual wisdom today we are going to share with you then we'll be discussing after med then after meditation practice then we'll discuss about particularly holistic lifestyle regarding white sugar then we will discuss about the mudra therapy what are mudra therapy we'll be discussing today about uh, particularly diabetic and the bp so how do we take care of that anyway let's start our spiritual wisdom friends this before discussing this subject one must understand very clearly we need to we, we need to understand in depth about our own source of life we are the soul being soul consciousness we are we have been discussing this for last so many classes we are the pure soul consciousness we exist in the other worlds we come to the physical world the planet may be anything may be planet planet earth it may be in this galaxy it may be in the other galaxy it can be any planet not only the physical not only the earth my dear friends so if you try to understand we are all evolving as i told you since ages it means since yugas we been coming here is not the first time or the last time maybe last time but we have been coming for so many so many yugas if you if you try to have a calculation you have been coming here for last number of births hundreds of births maybe a 200 birth 300 birth or 400 birth all depends upon is your own evolution of the soul we are all identified what are the source of suffering as and today on this earth planet my dear friends the most the highest source of suffering is we are identified with the physical body that is the first and foremost cause for the suffering on this planet earth my dear friends that is we are identified with this physical body most of the people if you observe the outside world the physical world especially as i told you we are the entire the creation is done in two ways one is prakriti and purusha so prakriti is as as such it is living with the nature it is living its own pure conscious life there is no law of karma it is leading its life successfully continuously It is always there in the tranquil state. It performs its own functions. It also lives along with the mother nature, along with the supreme intelligence, along the lines of supreme intelligence. This whole nature kingdom is living, my dear friends. What exactly happened to the human kingdom? There is a purusha, the other creation of the supreme intelligence, or paripurna atma. So the other creation of paripurna atma is human kingdom that is purusha so these are two parallel creations i explained in the earlier classes so when it comes to the human kingdom especially the our physical the physical world the human kingdom which is created here is a is part of purusha we call it as a purusha so what will happen is in purusha as a human kingdom we try to understand that we always pursue it as a the gross body or gross world friends this gra gross world and gross body whatever we perceive whatever we visualize outside we see we we touch and we feel and we see we experience as a physical world that is not the that is not the reality it is not the reality this is myth or can say it is a maya it is a illusion my dear friends this is an illusion before this comes to existence before the entire physical world entire the human human world human humanity come on to the existence 
we are existed as the soul consciousness or the energy consciousness. If you try to observe, before we born here, our face of our, our real face is the pure consciousness. After we die, again our real face, the reality is pure consciousness. And the entire world also the same thing, my friends. This world will come, this world will also go in some point of time. After Maybe after lakhs of years. Maybe after lakhs of years, millions of years, what will happen? This entire world also will vanish. It will be disappeared. All this, whatever you see, moon, sun, rivers, sea, all the water, whatever, whatever exists on this, the physical world, earth planet, or any other planets, they will also be coming and going. That means they take birth, they also die. But each one have different time periods. The physical world like earth is having lakhs of years. The human body also given certain amount of time to come here and go, to experience this mother earth, this mother nature, and then you have to depart. We start and few, do our, do our part and depart. As per Shakespeare says. Friends, like this, what will happen is, the evolution is going on continuously and in the form of human being, we all came here. We are evolving. We are evolving from time to time, again and again. And our frequent travel to this earth planet or this, this physical planet or any other planet, our frequent travel gives us a lot of enrichment in our soul qualities. Or this is called soul enrichment. That is towards the self-realization or enlightenment, you can say. So that, that happens continuously. It happens not in one lifetime. It takes several lifetimes, as I told earlier. It takes about 350, 400 lifetimes in order to get completely enriched, get self and get the self-realization or the moksha. So as the process of this continuous evolution will be growing and we'll have a lot of things to understand when we are growing in this human, as a humanity, as a human being, when we are growing, we need to understand what exactly we are. What is that we are consisting of? As you are seeing the physical body, you only, it appears like a physical body. The entire world also appears like a physical world. As I told you, this exists before, this will exist later. The entire, whatever, the, whatever you see here, the creation you see, the the supreme intelligence creation you see here, all the physical world, all the animal beings, plant kingdom, human kingdom, this all exists now. After some time, after the years, some years, this will perish. So that is why we call it as a, it's all temporary. What is permanent is, the permanent is pure soul consciousness. So that, uh, that exists always, that will eternally exist in this, in this cosmos, in the entire supreme creation, this in the different higher frequency worlds, right? This entire supreme, the soul consciousness always exists. It is never died. It is never born. It is never died. So only thing is, it will keep transmit. It will keep transferring from one life to other life. It will keep exchanging from one life to other life. It never died. It never born. As a physical body, we born and we, we again die. But we always exist in the form of pure soul consciousness in the form of soul consciousness we always exist in the one or other high frequency worlds my dear friends so now we are trying to understand the spiritual background the spiritual wisdom related to all this evolution of our own soul so where from it starts and what kind of different consciousness if you see the physical body if you try to understand our own physical body you try to understand that it is a combination of flesh, bones, all the organs, limbs and legs and you know, you try to see a physical body, a gross body. So you are trying to understand this is a combination of so several things and it functions. But is it the is it the thing is it the thing which is ent entirely operating? Only the physical body which you are seeing, is it the only thing which is exists here? In fact, as I told in the earlier classes, so what we see here on this earth planet, in this physical world, is only 1% we could perceive. There's a 99% we could not perceive with our, with our own eyes, with these physical eyes, with these physical senses, our sense organs, my dear friends. 
what exactly we cannot perceive is 99% which is exist, which always exist. Try to understand this. Because every one of us, one fine day, we are on that planet, on other, some other day, we are not here. It means where are we? Where are we come from? Where, where, we, where, where do we go? This is the thing, the basic fundamental thing we all need to understand. When we understand this particular thing, the our actual existence, the actual whatever the journey we do, how we come here, why we go again back and again what do we do here after coming over here and what is the purpose of coming over here, what is the after purpose is fulfilled or not fulfilled depends upon your own karmas, again you travel back. When you travel back, what do you do there and what are those lokas are there and this body as a physical body you are seeing but behind this physical body, what are the other bodies which are exist along with our traveling? Whenever we travel from other world, so if you want to travel in this physical world, what do you need, my dear friends? For the physical world, you want to travel from one, one place, one destination to other destination, you need a kind of a transportation, logistics. So you use that. So that's what we do. But when we are traveling from the high frequency world to this frequency world, it means we are existing here and we will be departing. That means we need something to travel from the higher worlds to this world. So that means this physical body is allow, is physical body is no more sufficient. Is never sufficient, my dear friends. The physical body exists today. The later someday it will perish because it's made of made out of panchabhutas, five elements, five elements of nature. So that is why we need to go back. Means we need certain other kind of systems, certain other kind of bodies, or we can say certain other kind of tools are required for this soul to go back, okay? So those things we call it as a, all the bodily systems of our soul. We try to discuss that today. And at the same time, when we born in, born on the earth planet, we'll be, we'll be uh, growing. That means our evolution starts and then it will be keep growing. So as a part of evolution, as a part of uh, the progress, what happens to our all qualities, the enrichment of all our qualities, as we explained earlier, there are six gunas, arishad vargas. So all the arishad vargas will be keep enriching from life, life to life, life after life. So basing on all those things, we get a state, a status of or a stage of soul. The evolution of soul will happen one infinite soul to infinite soul, as we discussed in the earlier classes. It means all our qualities will be keep enriching. So that means we call them as chakras energy centers. We call it as energy centers with respect to subtle subtle meaning of that is energy centers which are exist right away in the astral, astral body so which I am going to discuss. But so the, all the chakras indicates your status of evolution my dear friends. In what stage what, what stage what status of your evolution your own soul evolution you are right now having and from one life to other life how it is going on how to understand the soul evolution by understanding your all the seven chakras, you can understand the stage of soul evolution, my dear friends. So that is the purpose of understanding these chakras. These chakras indicates status of your evolution. Try to understand. Then also, when it comes to the human body, we born out of uh, physical world. We feel, we born here, and then we do our part. Then we are departing. When we are departing, where do we go? What are the other places we always exist? When we when you don't exist on the physical plane, on the physical earth, when you don't exist in the physical form, in the physical body, then where do we go? Where do we exist? Which are the other worlds? Where do we exist? And where do we stay for some some more time or number of years, hundreds of years, thousands of years? Where do we stay? And how do we come back? So to stay over the other in the other planes of existence, in the higher frequency world, we have there are other lokas. We have lokas. There are seven lokas which are created by supreme intelligence, which are seven worlds. We call it as seven worlds. Now let's understand the seven bodies, seven chakras, and seven worlds, my dear friends, which are all correlated. So try to interlink when I'm explaining. It's a very a deep concept. So whenever I'm explaining, you need to have complete your attention and focus on this particular thing. Friends, when we take a, when we take a physical body, born out of the mother womb using five elements, Panchabhutas, right? So when we come over here, I explained in the earlier classes, 
the pure soul consciousness departs in satya loka which are generated as amshatma from the purnatma from the satya loka a purnatma supreme intelligence generates specks specks of consciousness which are amshatma like how mother gives a birth to the several children the similarly the purnatma which is infinity soul when every everybody will become from infant to infinity soul in the course of long journey of soul a soul journey so when it becomes infinity soul that is the purnatma the complete the enlightened soul what will happen is he reaches to the satya loka the i'll also describe all the different lokas for you but for the sake of uh, the current the explanation the satya loka is the one wherein the purnatma the paripurnatma supreme intelligence start generating its own children in the form of amshatma the the children children means the children for the purnatma is the speck of consciousness the amshatma so the once amshatma starts from the satya loka that means which once it is start generated then what will happen is it's also called a pure soul it generated as a pure soul individual soul my dear friends for a human human kind or a human world or purusha there is a individual soul we dis- we discussed later in the previous class the individual soul starts traveling from the satya loka where does it go how does it happen so in this whole explanation all these chakras and the bodies and the worlds which will be keep described one by one you you try to make a note of them so as a pure soul i explained the as a pure soul we also come the pure soul alone will not come the soul is embedded or the soul is layered with seven layers of bodies my dear friends what are the seven body, seven layers of bodies around the soul the pure consciousness soul is a pure consciousness around which there are layers there are seven layers the there are seven layers we need to understand all the seven layers will be there always where the seven layers will come down descend along with the soul the soul is started making a journey from satya loka from satya loka when it started the seven bodies will be carried carried along with the pure consciousness which which will try to describe the first body comes to nirvanic body the cosmic body then comes to your supra causal body causal body astral body etheric body physical body these are the seven bodies my dear friends the the order the order from the ascending to descending order how we come to the earth planet so we come in this in this fashion in this manner that means your soul is consisting of all the seven layers seven bodies always but the physical body alone physical body and etheric body they are made out of physical planet that is mother mother earth my dear friends so from the mother earth these two bodies are prepared otherwise all the other five bodies which are always exist which always exist along with the pure consciousness so that is why we descend from the satya loka then where do we go we go to the the other loka next loka is cosmic world that is again in the fashion of uh, uh, the the worlds descending the what are the different worlds we descend we come with the seven bodies i explained you what are the seven bodies also we come with the seven worlds we pass through the all seven worlds we descend and we take a birth on the physical planet what are those other worlds so try to understand from top to from top to bottom satya loka tapo loka maha loka jana loka suvar loka bhuvar loka bhu loka right from the down to top bhu loka bhuvar loka suvar loka jana loka maha loka tapo loka satya loka this is the order my dear friends so in in sanskrit we call these names in the physical in the english names which are given is nirvanic world cosmic world supra causal world causal world upper astral world lower astral world then comes to physical world friends this is the stay this is the this is the way how the descending of the different worlds now your soul to uh, say so your individual soul took birth in the satya loka from the paripurnatma once it is taken it come to the tapo loka it wears the it, it takes the body that is called cosmic body the cosmic world so that's a cosmic world that means tapo loka friends this is a tapo loka so tapo loka it takes a particular body so that soul consciousness started in the satya loka then comes to immediately to the uh, cosmic world that is tapo loka so it takes a cosmic body then comes to supra causal body it takes supra causal body one more body in the maha loka 
right and then in the causal world it takes uh, the causal body that is janaloka in the janaloka it takes a causal body then comes to then it comes to suvarloka bhorloka that is a these two worlds are consisting of only one body that is astral body my dear friends so after that it comes to the earth planet then what will happen in the mother womb when it is entering in the third or fourth month of uh, the baby uh, the birth uh, the birth process going on inside the mother womb the fetus uh, is gro is growing right it's growing inside the mother womb in the third or fourth month or fourth or fifth month at that point of time this entire all the bodily systems the along with the soul consciousness the entire bodily system enters into the the mother womb into the fetus so what will happen is at that point of time the astral body enters inside the the mother womb into the that a small baby which is the infant the, the flesh and bones and the fetus which is growing as a physical form so which is growing inside it go and enters inside and then at that point of time when it enters inside then what will happen around which around which the etheric body starts developing so what is what is etheric body etheric body develops on the earth planet with the is using the ether so ether is the source for the etheric body that's why we call it the etheric body or pranamaya kosha or kanti sharira we call that as pranamaya kosha so friends so likewise what happen then what will happen once it comes inside after 9 months or so so definitely the baby will come out with the all entire bodily systems it has got then we call it as a human body but the human body we are seeing as a grass and we are thinking that it's a solid in nature so just uh, looking as a grass body but it uh, it appears so but it has got so much background of it and so many bodies are associated with the physical body my friends now let's understand from the physical so from the physical body how it uh, so going on the like you know from bottom to top we try to discuss so now we have discussed from the satya loka we take a paripur from paripurna atma we take a a pure consciousness or an individual soul we take come to the cosmic world that is so that is called tapoloka the cosmic body we take cosmic body particularly there the cosmic body we take there then coming to the next loka we come to the mahaloka that is suprakasal world so likewise we have taken all the seven bodies the seven bodies especially two bodies on the all the two bodies are related to the physical planet all other five bodies are related to the upper worlds that is from the other worlds of frequencies the high frequency high frequency worlds my dear friends so now what will happen is a person a born out of in the in the because of why the birth is taken place my dear friends the simple reason is all your past life karmas and you want to learn and you want to enrich soul qualities what are the soul what are the soul enrichment how the soul enrichment happens because of the enrichment of your arshad vargas what are the arshad vargas we you know very well kama krodha loba moha mada maacharya so these are the six qualities my friends the anger desire and then greed illusion arrogance arrogance means pride So then their jealousy comes into. So these are the six arisad vargas. These arisad vargas will be growing from one lifetime to other lifetime, my dear friends. It doesn't grow in one lifetime. You will be taking three hundred fifties to four hundred births. So in order to exit out of this all these arisad vargas, then you become a nirguna. Once this all arisad vargas, actually the pure consciousness, a pure soul. comes from the like a child, just born a child. What will happen? Just born a child doesn't have any mind. it means so he doesn't have any conscious mind so he just born a child so likewise a just born a soul out of the paripurna atma doesn't have any other kind of qualities it's a pure soul it's a pure soul but what will happen is in order to become a infinite soul you have to take a amsha atma from the purna atma then again you have to make all this uh, lifetimes you need to learn all these qualities once all these qualities are learned and win over then what will happen is you become a nirguna that means you become a guna gunatita so you go out of this all these gunas then you become a nirguna then you become infinite soul again you will be yeah, then you will be taking a role of again generating your own child that is child souls or you can say individual souls my dear friends so that is what the that's what the the cosmic plan that's what the the, the entire cosmic cosmos in the cosmic plan is likewise so that means as a child soul you you carry on uh, you take all these bodies you carry on all your janmas all your uh, all your lifetimes you'll be spending 400 350 what are the lifetimes it all depends on your free will my dear friends so the free will is so important the free will is very much existing in every in every human life the free will is very much so what does free will do 
you you took as a you took a human birth on this earth planet what do you do now either you can do job or you can do business or you can do you can quit all these things then you can enter into spiritual life you can lead entire spiritual life throughout your life you can only focus on spirituality spiritual wisdom then whatever lifetimes so let's say another 100 lifetimes what you need to learn you can learn in single lifetime that's very much possible but only thing it all depends upon your free will so now sometimes what happen if you apply the free will you start doing a spiritual journey only spirituality if you are start learning here so your the, the progress of the evolution the soul evolution from infant soul to the infinite soul will be very faster but is it that does it allow does it allow that your, your circumstances your family where you're born and what circumstances you are undergoing what environment you are there what difficulties are there what kind of stress and strain and what kind of financial difficulties or relationship issues so many things will be around you on this earth planet which may not allow you to pursue the spiritual path or spiritual path or spiritual wisdom continuously so your evolution may be slower or time to time it may happen it may not happen in one lifetime my friends but there is always a free will to you you can definitely do it if you decide to do in this lifetime itself so that happens only for the old soul or a, like always we say try to remember there are many soul stages which i explained earlier the old soul gets an idea to start meditation and then it comes to when it is slowly slowly growing in the more so many lifetimes doing more and more meditation what what will happen is it becomes the one it becomes the transcendental soul or vimukha vimukatma it becomes a transcendental soul that means what happen it get enlightened so once it get enlightened then it will after enlightenment what will happen after the self realization what will happen is you start serving other people that means you start teaching like you will become you will become a buddha so once you become a buddha then what will happen you have no more birth that means you have no more reincarnation then you become infinite soul then you take a role of again generating your own child souls or you may be uh, you may be, you may be creating lot of planets lot of galaxies lot of universes you will be start creating your own your own creation you can start in the upper worlds so that's what the entire the journey it happens how the journey it happens my dear friends now when you born as a human being so what you are doing here so when you be when you born as a human being on this earth planet with a sub two things one is the car, the past life karmas so we are taking a birth a first even it's a first birth you are taking or 100 birth you are taking 200 birth you are taking so the first birth when you are taking here you are coming for soul enrichment of that is all the enrichment of these qualities my dear friends all the arshad vargas you come over here then you start life, you start your life in the first birth let's say the first human birth the first the, the first and foremost birth when you are taken so you start learning all these six qualities arshad vargas arshad vargas i explained you same time so we we divide all these qualities and we say that so the human being will be living with the three nature of the three natures tamo guna rajo guna satvik guna nirguna my dear friends so many of the life lifetimes you'll be living as tamo guna many of the lifetimes so many hundreds of lifetimes you may be living in rajo guna then hundreds of lifetimes you may be living in the satvik guna then after coming out of all this three, three nature of uh, a human boy, human being so you then you will be entering into the nirguna so in the state of nirguna only you get nirvana so only in the state of nirguna you will get the nirvana my dear friends so what will happen now so when you are in the physical body your muladhara chakra will be always working what are the seven chakras my dear friends that i'll come to you now so that i'll try to explain you so when you are living in the physical body your muladhara chakra is working so that means you have taken a physical body and you are living on this earth planet is a family life or a whatever uh, whatever the kind of sanyasi life whatever the you are doing some business or uh, uh, doing uh, some service or you are into the profession or you are into the farming as a farmer as a whatever it may be whatever the occupation you are doing on this earth planet but you are leading some life on the earth planet when you take in the birth on this earth planet then what will happen is you need food for your body you need rest for your body then will be a reproduction there is the kind of all these kind of qualities will be there as a part of muladhara chakra muladhara chakra is the base chakra root chakra it's called as a root chakra my dear friends so this root chakra will be having all these uh, qualities always with you try to understand so these uh, chak this particular chakra muladhara chakra base chakra having all these qualities then you you start leading the life here 
you'll be doing your own job and at the same time you need food you'll take the food so to in order to make sure that your physical body is working you'll be taking holistic food sometimes if you don't have awareness of physical the signs of living then you'll be taking non holistic food sometimes you get into the diseases so then you'll be coming out of the diseases all with all your practice of the lifestyle or whatever it may be and then slowly what happen is at the, the some of the so many lives i'm telling when the human birth is taken place on this earth planet or many times you are coming and going back so what will happen is so the basically you have so many lifetimes you spend without knowing any kind of a at the higher wisdom at all so that means uh, maybe about 70 to 80 lives you spend in muladhar chakra swadhisthan chakra what is the uh, the first chakra is muladhar chakra it feeds your physical body it takes up takes care of all your physical body requirements that is sex and uh, food the, the food requirements and the excretion and all the physical body what are the physical body requirements it takes care and there is that is the way the muladhar chakra is connected to your physical body the physical body is connected to muladhara chakra muladhara chakra physical body and physical world this is the the kind of interconnectivity between the physical world muladhara chakra that is a chakra and the physical body so these three are interlinked my dear friends then when you are started functioning what will happen is then you the next the next chakra which keeps operating in your own current life is also swadhisthana chakra swadhisthana means what happen i explained in earlier times so swadhisthana means you try to take some control that means swadhis swadhina swadhina means you try to take some some control then slowly what will happen is this uh, at this point of time in the muladhara chakra physical world what happen my dear friends will be living with the tamoguna only so many lives will lead tamoguna so that means we only do the things like say earning something feeding children uh, reproducing children and then sleep and eat and only this much only you will be limited to you have no awareness of the higher things my dear friends you are only having a family life so many a times we can observe many people in the on the earth planet they only lead their family life so produce the children and then feeding them and giving them the job they also uh, take a good amount of food and all these things they lead a physical just a physical life nothing beyond that so at the same time they get into diseases and then one fine day because of uh, many other diseases whatever it may be they'll pass away from the earth planet so that means friends try to understand then goes to next next chakra is swadhisthana chakra so swadhi when swadhisthana chakra comes into picture you try to understand you try to be aware of the surroundings then slowly what happens some kind of awareness will start inside you then you want to do something something more something beyond to this uh, the physical the qualities what i said so other than uh, above the mudal chakra muladhar chakra just swadhisthana chakra you start learning something you start controlling others you start doing something above that so slowly what happen here also tamoguna works so here also so many uh, tamoguna qualities are there and slowly what will happen is so little rajoguna quality also starts okay so that is how again you will be spending 70 to 80 birds on the at this point of on this thing also then what will happen is so particularly your uh, astral body is connected to this that means so whatever the qualities are there within you see the rajo rajoguna qualities will be there then what will happen you are leading the life as you are leading continuously the life then what will happen then you enter into the uh, other thing is called then comes to manipuraka chakra what is manipuraka chakra manipuraka chakra means you become something you want to become something powerful you want to control others and you want to guide others that is called manipuraka chakra my friends that manipura manipuraka means like you, you you feel like you are superior to other people so that is what the the kind of qualities you pick up so in the part of the manipuraka chakra here also you will be spending so many lives so in the same status of quality same so you will have the kind of what is the what is the stage of the soul at this point of time in the first stage is infant soul that is muladhara chakra muladhara chakra will be working in infant soul and also baby soul and both the times what happen your muladhara chakra will be working then goes to young soul and then goes to matured soul friends i told you the young soul stage what will happen you will be having the, some kind of a urge to lead other people so that is why that particular play that particular stage of the soul is called young soul and which is connected to the young soul is directly connected to your the chakra which is particularly the uh, so manipurak chakra so your young soul it will be operating with manipurak chakra always and then comes to matured soul my dear friends so matured soul matured soul will be <coughs> connected to anatha chakra matured soul 
So matured soul means what? What will happen is when it becomes matured soul, what will happen? They try to be creative. Anahata chakra. Anahata chakra means what will happen? So they try to be creative, like a poet, cricketer, or a musician. All these things will happen in the, in the form of anahata chakra that is connected to your matured soul. So only when, only when you try to understand and you want to live a, a, a trikarana suti life with the uh, all this manacha vacha karmana you want to be pure so when you become purified when you become purified and clean then that is that particular chakra which is activating is visuddha chakra so now we are coming coming from the down so that is first one is muladhara chakra the root chakra so that is called then swadhisthana chakra that is sacral chakra then sacral chakra then other one is manipura chakra solar plexus that is called then comes to anatha chakra that is heart chakra my dear friends so then comes to visuddha ch visuddha chakra so visuddha chakra that is called throat, ch throat chakra then comes to agna chakra which is called uh, throat chakra this, this third eye chakra then goes to crown chakra crown chakra means sahasra chakra so that means in so many lifetimes so slowly when you are evolving as a soul then you have come to the from the uh, from from the muladhara came to the swadhisthana swadhisthana to manipuraka manipuraka to anahata chakra that is a this particular heart chakra then at this at this anahata chakra you live your evolution like you know you are slowly coming out of rajoguna rajoguna then you are entering into sattvic guna when, when you are entering into sattvic guna you enter into the visuddha chakra so at the throat chakra so then from here it is very narrow my dear friends so from here your growth and your the growth will be faster you don't need to have so much grass with you the grass grassness of your body will be slowly slowly forgotten then what will happen at this point of time so particularly your visuddha chakra is activated means you are pure like gandhi mahatma mother teresa all these great people who are into the pure service. They are selfless service, my dear friends. Even in another chakra, there is no service. Try to understand. As a musician, what happens? You go and play the music, then you take good amount of money, then you feed your family, and you live with, live, live with your family, and even you will be doing hymns also. Like you will be eating non-vegetarian, you are killing the animals. All these qualities are very much there in Anatha chakra also. That is called, that particular soul is called matured soul. Then when you become old soul, you become old soul when your Visuddha Chakra is getting activated. So when Visuddha Chakra is activated, then slowly you become a old soul. Then what will happen? Slowly you get awareness of your own self and try to understand yourself. And so as a Visuddha Chakra, you have a lot of nature of service to do others. You want to take care of others. So by just being non-selfish and you want to help others, what will happen is, so particularly friends, try to understand depends upon the chakra activation, depend upon the say, so the stage of the soul, then when you are died here, you will particularly, you will go back to that particular world. So let's say you died in the physical world. The person died in the physical world, then first etheric body goes away. Etheric body will, will be melted and mixed with the, merged with the Panchabhutas. So that's a ether which will be merged with the Panchabhuta. That means physical body, etheric body disappeared. The process of death, I am telling you, I will brief you that. So once these two are over, then your astral body gets released out of this uh, physical body. So after astral body, what will happen? It will go to the, the next world called the, uh, in the world, in the sequence of worlds also, I told you, Buloka. The, once the from Buloka, this from the physical body, etheric body, both are died in the Buloka, then we will enter into Bhorloka. So Bhor Loka means uh, which is the which is that Loka? So Bhor Loka is also called as astral world. Friends, Bhor Loka is called astral world in English term. So in the astral world, we enter into with the, with the, once we leave this physical body as astral body, we enter into the Bhor Loka. So the astral world particularly carries four things, my dear friends. Try to understand the astral world carries. So total astral world, uh, once you entering into astral world, so with the astral body, the astral body consists of 19 organs, my dear friends. What are those 19 organs? I explained in the earlier. So the 19 organs are the part of the astral world. So friends, try to understand what are the eyes. So the, uh, the 19 organs are divided into totally three types. Try to understand. So the particularly, so the first, uh, the, try to understand, there is mind system, life systems and there are life system is there mind system is there sense organs are there right sense organs so that means the total 19 organs which are part of this astral body will leave from this physical body enter into the astral world so what are those the, it carries always mind so it what is the part of mind system again oh, there are four are there mind intellect ego and chitta 
So these are pore are part of the astral body when it is going from physical body to the other world. When when the death happens, so it carries all these four. So what are those? Mind, intellect, ego, and chitta. Okay. So along with this, astral body will also have the complete information about all our sense organs, our duty organs, my dear friends. And also there are pranas. So there are also pranas. I explained earlier there are pranas are there. We have we have five pranas, pancha pranas, pancha pranas. So these pancha pranas are also part of the astral body. The mind is also part of astral body, and then sense organs like we have five karmendriya, kar karmendriya are there, pancha endriya are there. These five senses also ear, nose, tongue, skin, uh, the all these uh, uh, things these are also part part of the this astral body. Then five duty organs are there. What are the duty organs? Legs, legs and hands, and then mouth is there. Then we have excretory system. Then the finally. The final, the final one is uh, we also have something called the fifth organ is there. So the fifth organ is uh, the total five part of five parts in the 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 last system that is say uh, that that is duty organs. Duty organs are five, sense organs are five, and four pranas. Sorry, five pancha pranas. Then four parts as a mind. Total nineteen will go out. Of, nineteen will go along with astral astral body enters into astral world. So that is the lower astral world, higher upper astral world. So what will happen is depends upon your karma here. What you have done, good karmas for bad karmas depends upon that. So what will happen is the lower astral world is called bhor loka. The higher astral world is called suvar loka. Bhor loka, suvar loka. So depends upon your karma here. You have done good good karmas, then you have. The good life to be enjoyed in the astral worlds. So that is, we will be entered into the bhor loka. That is the lower astral world. Then, then upper to that suvar loka. Suvar loka means uh, the the good karmas are there. You will be spending more time in the suvar loka. The bad karmas are there. You will be spending the lower astral world. That is called bhor loka, my dear friends. Then, we'll, what will happen is you are you are spending your time. So that's what we say in the Bhagavad Gita. As much our punya. Punya, Papa, what you do on this earth planet, you will be spending your the good time or bad time. We don't have Naraka or Naraka Loka, Swarga Loka, my dear friends. There is no Naraka Loka, Swarga Loka. This is what I am trying to explain. So then you will be spending Bhor Loka, Swar Loka. Then after spending some good time, bad time in the upper Lokas, then what will happen is you slowly enter into you. You have you cannot exist permanently there, my dear friends. You have to come back again to the earth planet. So in order to come back, so you, you need to make a plan. In order, in order to come back, what will happen? Then we will be going to the causal world, causal world, causal world. That is, that is called the after after the bhor loka, swar loka. Then comes to jana loka. Friends, jana loka means jana loka means what will happen is the people. It's called jana loka means all jana, different all the people who are died here. They are their their home, their actual place is jana loka. So most of us, once we die here, then again we go to the uh, bhor loka, swar loka. There also we die. That is astral body will also die. So then after the astral body died, then goes to jana loka. Jana loka will be existing there. All jana, different people will be existing there, or it may be. But one thing is the exception case is normal people who are not evolved will be always in the jana loka. You can't go to higher lokas. The higher, what are the higher loka? After jana loka, what happens is you have maha loka. So maha karan loka. So that uh, maha karan loka, if you want to enter, you must be a the kind of a specific person. Who has done lot of service and lot of service like Mother Mother Teresa or Gandhi Mahatma Mahatma Gandhi like this. You know the great service non service people. We they go from instead of staying in Jana Loka they go to the Mahaloka. So they'll exist over there. They'll they'll be there. Okay. So now what happens in the entire process, my dear friends? You have not started any meditation. You have not looked at the spiritual spirituality at all. So you'll be going up to Jana Loka. So again, in the, after going to Jana Loka, what will happen is you will be guided by the upper souls. So you are. Uh, what will happen is you have self uh, soul guides there, soul guides who are in the Jana Loka. That means who are enlightened masters who left uh, left already. So they will be working as the soul guides in the Jana Loka. So what will happen? The soul, uh, this particular uh, this particular soul with the uh, with the causal body entered into. That means astral bodies died in the astral world. Then enter into the causal world. Causal world is Janaloka. You will go. You will be going there. You will be living for most of the time. Most of the time, you can live there. What will happen is there. Your soul family, soul guide will be there. So they will be able to guide you. So what is the purpose of life you have taken? 
how it are how you have gone to the earth planet what you have done what are the karmas you have done what you have not done what you have achieved what you have not achieved all this entire the blueprint which you have taken earlier life you went there and you came back so the particularly all these questions will be asked there by your soul guides or by your upper uh, others called we also called as a over self my dear friends so there are over self or higher self your higher self your over self are your soul guides who are existing in the uh, karan loka karan loka or jana loka so they will ask the questions particularly what exactly purpose you went why you came back what you are not done what you are done everything will be evaluated but generally we we uh, try to discuss in puranas you know all over uh, the all the, the ancient uh, uh, puranas and all we try to say yamadharma yamaloka yamadharma raja and then we also say uh, chitragupta all these things friends there is there there's all there are there are actually mythological but in fact uh, as per vedas and as per uh, we speak as per the spiritual wisdom then we also we we, we also we, we only have one thing is the evolution of your particular the earlier life will be completely reviewed in the jana loka in the karan loka so why your soul guides so soul guides are there so they are all the they are the guide for you even when you come to the earth planet if you do meditation you can connect your soul guide through your astral body always you have communication the communication is always will be there we can definitely can achieve that so if you are doing proper meditation practice so on the earth planet my dear friends now what will happen is particularly when the soul guide is uh, reviewing your entire the previous life then what will happen you are living in the jana loka for so so much time much more time as much as time you wanted there you live there but uh, so swar loka bor loka swar loka is passed away that means you have spent your good time bad time all karmas there then enter into the your jana loka to review yourself and plan for the next birth that is again you are preparing a blueprint and you are trying to say take one karana what is the why it's called as a karan loka or jana loka it is actually you are taking one karana karana means there is some reason there is some cause you are taking for the next birth my dear friends you are now designing your own family the kind of family you are to select the parents you are going to select the environment you are going to select what purpose you are coming back to your earth and what you would like to achieve in this lifetime so entire thing the purpose of the purpose of life the design of your blueprint will be done in the again jana loka karan loka by your soul guides and again you will be coming back from there you will come to the swar loka gor loka then comes to physical world that is physical the bhu loka so this is what again friends most of the times many of the people what happen during their lifetimes about 200 250 lifetimes until unless they get a spirituality spiritual wisdom within them so they will be only going from jana loka to the bhu loka jana loka bhu loka this is the way the traveling will be keep happening in hundreds of birds my dear friends maybe 200 250 birds so what will happen is now so slowly slowly as, as you are evolving as you are doing taking so many uh, birds what will happen is slowly will be going out of the rajoguna then you will be entering into satvik guna even you are crossing the visuddha chakra so when you are crossing this chakra what happen you are pure self uh, selfless nature you are a pure uh, uh, you are into pure service you are helping others you are living with the living with the visuddha chakra so when you with a person a person died in the anatha chakra friends up to anatha chakra who is having qualities of anatha chakra i told qualities of all the chakras so anatha chakra means you are creative you are a sports star you are a uh, maybe a musician you are a poet you are whatever it may be so the kind of creativity you have so when you are died that kind of persons died from the out of the anatha chakra so they can be able to up to anatha chakra muladhara chakra swadhisthana chakra manipura chakra anath chakra so until this war people having that kind of qualities they died on that planet they can reach only to the jana loka that is causal world they can go up to the causal world my dear friends beyond that if you want to go you have visuddha chakra activated you are in the after so many births what happen so much you have done and then you will be frustrated you will be vexed with that uh, normal you know mundane things mundane things like she sleeping doing eating and then feeding children and growing children get become old age and then again died so like this you know you have, how many lives you can do like that so slowly slowly you get frustrated you will be vexed what happen slowly you started self you are started helping others like mother teresa you want to you want to help anathas 
are for people you want to give free education you want to give free health so that kind of that kind of you know the qualities will start that is when your visuddha chakra is getting activated when visuddha chakra is act getting activated what happen their true speak their, their speak will be truth their deeds will be truthful and they also uh, express thinking and doing everything will be truthful my dear friends that means to the point exactly what is required they will do they will not do anything they will not waste the time so that is visu chakra when somebody died in the visu chakra what happen is he go and live some time in the mahaloka that is above the janaloka there is a mahaloka you try to review my video you can understand so the order what i explained you so that is bhuloka bhor loka suvar loka then karan loka janaloka after the janaloka there is something called mahaloka so these kind of visu visuddha chakra activated people will be going and living for some time before taking one more part so they must by friends who are who are going to even after crossing this janaloka who are going to live or get the enter the get the eligibility of living into the mahaloka they also have to come back again until what time until they get self realization until they get enlightened until they become nirguna they have to keep coming my dear friends so they live for some time in the mahaloka all this selfless and pure service oriented people like mahatma gandhi all these people so what will happen is again they will come back so so more so many lives they lead like that many many of 50 50 to 60 lives they spend in the visuddha chakra that is so as a uh, uh, as a uh, as a person related to the mahaloka so you will be spending so many lifetimes again you will be taking so many births and then slowly what happen you start doing meditation then you will be getting questions my dear friends what are the questions we get at the end of for this visuddha chakra the lifestyle then what will happen is you will be start getting some questions who am i why i am born here where from i come where do i go back when i die when i when the death takes place what happens to me where do i go all these questions you know the kind of questions which starts inside your mind because of that what happens slowly the exploration will start towards the your own practice of the like you know, learning pranayama learning yoga asanas learning meditation all these things happen my dear friends then what will happen slowly slowly you evolve from visuddha chakra by doing practice of meditation by starting whatever the practice of meditation you start and getting experiences in the meditation and then you will be slowly slowly connecting to the higher masters higher worlds messages you get and you see lot of uh, visit lot of other higher masters then slowly your third eye chakra that is agna chakra gets activated so when this gets activated what happen you will be doing lot of tapas lot of meditation lot of practice of spirituality all these you do the person who die with this uh, initial stages my friends once you enter into this uh, this uh, agna chakra also there are many number of number of births will happen because you will also have la- normal life all the family life everything will be there but you are trying to practice meditation what happened in that duration also the many lifetimes why do you take even in the agna chakra means it doesn't happen in one lifetime my dear friends you can't learn the entire spirituality you can't learn, you can't get your third eye fully activated so only your practice practice practicing meditation learning spiritual wisdom wisdom then slowly slowly what happen this third eye gets activated fully it may take so many births you may you may practice in several lifetimes in like in one lifetime you may start knowing about pranayama knowing about meditation something in other life so many other lifetimes you may practice you may not practice more so once you practice fully and you got uh, the great amount of uh, tapas all this you do so the people who die with this state of agna chakra they go to tapaloka my dear friends they go to tapaloka so what will happen is the by the time by the time you reach tapaloka a candidate for tapaloka is is particularly he has got he has uh, activated his uh, the body called so suprakasal suprakasal body is activated and then come, coming back to the cosmic body my dear friends whenever the, your agna chakra get activated agna chakra gets activated so now you are a candidate for tapaloka you are a candidate for tapaloka at the same time in your seven body systems your cosmic body started working friends whenever you come to the physical earth after you departed from after you came out of from your uh, the purnatma what happens is as amshatma so all the bodies which works up to what happen your your physical body your etheric body your astral body your causal body so and if, if require if sometimes supra causal body these five bodies will work if these five bodies will be keep in the alive condition that depends upon your status of your state of evolution out of the, these five bodies only keep working 
and you will be keep using these five bodies only to enter into the that particular world so you have a causal body you can enter the jana loka you have supra causal body you can enter into the maha loka my, my dear friends maha loka then what will happen is apart from this when you do more and more meditation you can with the help of your cosmic body cosmic body is also part of seven bodies right so then what will happen with the help of cosmic body you will enter into the the world called the world called tapo loka my dear friends so tapo loka is the uh, the loka the where particularly all this uh, all this great uh, masters like you know who have done so much meditation they got enlightened also they got enlightened with their own meditation but what happens is so the tapo loka will have uh, the people who are living there is all the people who got enlightened they know themselves they realize themselves so that kind of people will be residing in tapo loka but what happen friends i'll tell you the people who go to tapo loka who are eligible and who are living in tapo loka after death after their death they also need to come back to our planet what purpose they have not started the service Service means what? Serving other people, making others to realize whatever you learned. So you are you are you are learned tapas, you are learned meditation. You got enlightened. You got great powers. You got great wisdom, spiritual wisdom. But what will happen is unless you share with others, unless you teach others, what will happen? Again, the people who go even to tapoloka, they have to come back to the earth planet in order to serve other people, other humanity. You want to enlighten them. You want to make them. Uh, you also make them. to say get self realization all this process so that is what that is what the process that, that is where the uh, the the stage is called harihan my dear friends harihan means what happen you got enlightened you win over and you got out of all the six arshad vargas you became nirguna and then when you became nirguna you got enlightened then now he has started teaching others then he become arihanta he it has started teaching the people that means within his family or within surroundings he started teaching what will happen is after that slowly he started teaching to the this bigger society the big number of people so in your own community you started teaching more and more people then you become a bodhisattva so after that after bodhisattva you wanted to teach the entire world like gautam buddha after he became enlightened what happened so he started teaching the entire world so that then he became what happened is is a nirvanic body will get activated my dear friends why when the nirvanic body when the nirvanic body gets activated after tapoloka after your cosmic body activated now what you are doing is you are now once the cosmic body activated when you reach the tapo loka my dear friends you have no individuality at all you forget the individuality so that means what happens is until the until the the supra causal world that is until the uh, uh, maha loka you are always exist as individual when it come, when it comes to tapo loka from tapo loka then goes to the satya loka these two uh, lokas have two bodies two uh, two corresponding bodies the one is cosmic body and is nirvanic body my dear friends so with these two bodies what happens is any soul individual soul when these two bodies gets activated it will be merging to merging with the entire universe they don't find an individuality in the, themselves these two bodies are common to the many of the souls my dear friends so why, that is why once your cosmic body gets activated you always reach up to tapo loka but even after reaching tapo loka you have to come back to the earth planet many a times for what purpose you want to teach others you want to you want to become a buddha so buddha means serving all the human kind so you are you are your sahasrara that means the sahasrara chakra gets activated the sahasrara is not a chakra it is a state of the state so that is which in which what happens is you start helping all the other people you started teaching all the people you became a buddha then you get the nirvana you you become an infinite soul you become a paripurna atma now you can go and start your own creation my dear friends so this is how all the chakras all the bodies all the seven lokas are interconnected my friends try to remember so and i would like to tell you not only the seven lokas there are other seven below lokas are there so try to understand there are total bhuvana lokas bhuvana lokas we call we call them as not not only seven there are other seven more are there which are lower lower frequency world uh, worlds my dear friends wherein so there are lot of other animal beings are living so the so many other you know under sea under the under the, underneath of uh, earth underneath of water there are many of the species are living so those lokas are called under uh, lower frequency worlds also atala vitala sutala tala tala patala so these are seven worlds which are existing which are low frequency worlds we as a human being always we travel from bhuloka to till the satya loka these are seven worlds seven bodies seven chakras how they are interlinked so try to understand is a very 
deep concept, very big concept. You always need to watch again to understand. If you have any questions also, you can ask me. Because to explain each chakra, each world, each body itself, it takes huge time. But I try to manage, I try to give you the concept of the interlinking of all these uh, three body, uh, seven bodies, seven chakras and seven worlds. So hope you understood this. Let's go to the meditation now. Let's sit for the meditation. So, and then we travel from this life to the, and we would like to, we all would like to become infinite soul at one point of time, my dear friends. So, overall, knowing meditation, go into the meditation, start meditation. For every one of us, whatever the stage of soul we are, whatever the body, whatever the chakra we are living with, whatever it may be, we would like to travel, traverse towards the infinite soul, my dear friends. So that is the our highest purpose of the soul journey. So let's start meditation. Switch off your lights. Set down your mind. Sit comfortably. Cross your legs, cross your feet. Take a chair support. The backs out of our chair. You can take a support of wall. Sit comfortably, be relaxed, relaxed, relax the entire body, all the organs, all the physical organs. Get relaxed, sit comfortably, close the eyes, remove the spectacles, close the eyes. Always be with closed eyes until I say okay. Now start observing your breath, keep observing your breath. Now we are going to do wonderful meditation. After this, the great spiritual wisdom we receive today. Wonderful meditation. We all would like to become infinite soul. In one or other lifetimes, we all want to become infinite soul. Paripurnatma, creator. There is no urgency. Whatever the lifetime you are leading with, whatever the soul stage you are living with, whatever the chakra got activated within you, doesn't matter. No urgency at all. We have so many lifetimes to achieve so many things. But every lifetime you are to utilize in a great way. Do not waste one minute also. Use your free will in order to achieve the highest spiritual wisdom. You want to become Janma Rahitya in the same lifetime. It is possible with your own free will. All about this practice, practice of meditation, sadhana, deep sadhana will take you the same lifetime you become infinite soul. You become an enlightened master. Even the enlightened masters comes to the earth planet sometimes only for a particular purpose. They are called avataras. Once you become infinite soul, you are no more birth, no more death. You are out of this reincarnation cycle, law of reincarnation. You go out of that. You don't need to take any birth on this earth planet. Once you become infinite soul, you become a creator. You start producing the Amshatmas. But even sometimes, the enlightened souls take birth on this earth planet. They are called avataras. Rama avatara, Krishna avatara, Buddha avatara. They are avataras. They come with certain purpose to establish, to correct some system on the earth planet. They visit. Sometimes they visit. Otherwise, not required to come at all. Once you become an infinite soul, you become a creator of your own creation, you will be expanding the universe, become multi-universe. 
you start creating your own planets, your own life on those planets. There's a power of creation in the hands of infinite soul. We all want to become infinite soul one or other day. In one lifetime or other lifetime, any of the lifetime, we would like to become infinite soul. We need to practice more and more. We need to do more and more sadhana in order to achieve that. Be with your natural breath. Be with your natural breath. Simple, natural, tender, soft, tranquil. Be with that. No forceful breath. Simple, natural breath. Be with it. Keep observing your breath.
last one minute final one minute of meditation last 30 seconds final 30 seconds final 10 seconds 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 0 place your both hands and your eyes both eyes 5 more seconds 5 4 3 2 1 0 slowly open your eyes slowly take your hands Yes, friends. So today we will be knowing and discussing about the white sugar part of the holistic lifestyle. So, what is the white sugar? So, white sugar is made in the factories, sugar factories, friends, from the sugar cane. It is made up of. So the main thing is while processing the sugar cane into sugar, or you call, and also sometimes in the factories they make they also make it as a bella, that is jaggery also. Whatever sugar. white sugar and jaggery comes out of sugar cane so that's what we need to understand one thing the fundamental thing we need to understand is first of all in the sugar factories they use lot of chemicals in order to make it white in nature so they all do all that they do all that then with their fermentation all these thing they produce lot of uh, you know the ingredients related to the liquor liquor factory also they make there only there itself in the name of uh, the agriculture industry right in the name of farmers what they do is they do all this they resort to this kind of activities so what happens is now so you try to observe so one thing is in sugar either it is a sugar white sugar extracted from sugar cane or the jaggery extracted from the sugar cane both have one thing is highest amount of glucose my dear friends the highest amount of glucose the moment you eat sugar Uh, or the sugar jaggery, whatever the sugar cane jaggery or sugar cane sugar, white sugar. So once the moment you eat, the amount of glucose jump or the go into the blood is enormous. It means at a time the amount of glucose added to your blood will be increased too much. So that is the major the factor, the damaging factor, and which is causing many of the diseases. What you so called BP, sugar, you no, know, all the arthritis. acidity so many so many other things even in fact the can cancer patients get into lot of issues any cancer patient if you become a diabetic or if you become kind of a taking all the sugar related things 
is the disease will be much more rampant. It doesn't subsidize, my dear friends. That is why, so taking this direct sugar, many of the times, you know, what happens? People are here, people are taking coffee, tea, all these things. So they, they start consuming the sugar. So directly, what will happen is, try to understand the importance of glucose. I explained in the previous classes, refer my old video. <laughs> Especially, the importance of glucose is very important in our body in order to have the energy for all our organ, uh, the different organs, all the bodily systems to work functions, the organs to function, function properly, we need glucose for every organ. So the glucose is generated out of our digestion system. So for example, whatever you eat, a food, maybe you eat uh, roti or otherwise you eat uh, rice or whatever, uh, the sabji or curries, whatever you eat. So what will happen at the end of digestion process, one thing called glucose will be generated. So the glucose generated means it go and mix with the bloodstream your your own bloodstream it will get into that so once it get into that then it will be conveyed to all the organs through the bloodstream my dear friends so at the same time try to understand i explained in the previous class so out of uh, a healthy human being will have about five to six liters of blood so how much sugar how much glucose is supposed to be there present in the uh, blood all the time is max to max five to six grams is more than enough in order to run your entire organ systems so entire body system. So the five to six uh, grams, uh, so how it will be generated? Just by your normal way of digestion, it will be generated. Yeah, the by normal way of uh, whatever the food you eat, then it will gen generate the glucose, that five to six grams will be always existing in the blood. So in order to, if at all excess, excess glucose comes into your blood, then what will happen? That is the problem. So now by eating the sugar, whatever the white sugar, white uh, the sugar cane jaggery, by eating this, both the things, what you are doing is you are trying uh, directly you are pumping glucose into the blood. So already the glucose generated from your own digestion system, which is used by your body. Now the excess glucose comes into your body now. So the excess glucose go into the all this uh, you know the bloodstream. It go and mix with the bloodstream. Then what will happen? It goes every day. You are again you know every day you are drinking coffee. Every day you are drinking tea. What happens? Excess amount of glucose is keep keep on adding into your uh, bloodstream. Then what will happen is slowly slowly it gets coated with the coated on the inner inner walls of the the blood veins, all the arteries everywhere it will be get coated. So then what will happen? You are the blood flow will become thick, uh, thin, become thin. Then the pressure will increase. The pressure, will, the pressure, the pressure with which the blood goes inside the veins, it gets multifold, it gets increased. Then, then, that, then it comes to be a blood pressure. The blood pressure happens, heart attack will happen. So many things will happen, my friends. So then your sugar also, the same, same matter because of the excessive glucose, all your, you know, the, the kind of functioning of your liver and the kidneys, everything get affected. Then slowly you become a diabetic and then you have no control on your, uh, even uh, the urination, all these things. So a lot of side effects comes because of the excess glucose present in the blood. What is required? The only 5 to 6 grams on a given time to, in order to use by your body, 5 to 6 grams of glucose required, the sugar required by your friends. So now that is why, so try avoiding use these two things. One is the especially the sugar, white sugar, sugar canes, sugar cane jaggery. Both the things are not, not at all required, my dear friends. Then especially with respect to environment, you see what happens is in order to produce one kg of sugar, they try to use about 28,000 liters, my dear friends, water. 28,000 liters they, they utilize in order to produce one kg of sugar. In fact, if you use the same amount of water, it can grow. So not less than 30 kg of uh, your uh, millets. 30 kg of uh, millets, you can easily grow. Then what will happen? You can feed so many number of people. So approximately, you can feed out of 900 people. 900 people, you can feed a millet food. Very, uh, you know, easy way. You can serve out of 900 people. You can serve by growing 30 kg of uh, millet with the help of the same amount of water. So that means how much harm you are doing for the environment you are trying to understand. So that is why in the name of the sugar, sugar, sugar cane, sugar production, all these things, these are all the, friends, let me tell you, these are all the foreign methods which came to India, which is spoiled everything. Now they want to declare, slowly, slowly, they want to declare the entire India as a diabetic capital, diabetical, di diabetic uh, capital, di diabetic center, 
for the entire world itself they want to make india as a diabetic capital that means all people they want to convert into diabetic diabetic state diabetic condition the reason it will happen because you are using all the unnatural method non non holistic lifestyle method you are leading into then why don't it happen it will happen uh, quite uh, in some time so unless otherwise you uh, you have taken care of yourself you will go into the holistic lifestyle you will be definitely undergoing that that's what happening every year you take the statistics year on year it is increasing the number of diabetics year on year is increasing it is alarming condition my dear friends same similar to the cancer cancers also many of the many of the houses now which are which doesn't have anything we are hearing from the you know the elite people rich people or poor people middle class where everywhere we are hearing that cancer cancer so cancer is happening in every house all this is because of your non holistic lifestyle nothing else okay along with that add the pyramid energy add the meditation energy along with the holistic lifestyle the mix with your holistic lifestyle and meditation and the pyramid energy so this much if you do then you will be always physically healthy till the last breath given to you so there is the our entire life span is decided decided and determined predetermined already in the upper worlds in the causal world itself the uh, the starting date the end date of your every journey is already fixed you have taken a ticket and started your journey you are already the return ticket is already booked your date is already fixed in the causal world itself when you have taken the causal body or coming down to the astral world that time itself your birth date and death date both are fixed and you are coming here only the thing is how much life span how do you increase what will happen is because of your non dual holistic lifestyle and you know kind of a the the uh, the uh, the kind of a materialistic world what you, materialistic life what you are lead here after coming to the earth planet you are perverted you are diverted you are misled by many many things many many attractions many many colors and all these things on this physical planet so you try with a with a lot of gunas what you have so with all these things you are perverted you are not able to lead the proper life what will happen you are number see in between the birth rate and death rate there are number of swasa number of births are given to you this is like you know it's a bank of uh, the swasa bank there is a breath bank my dear friends so the number of breaths are fixed so what will happen is number of uh, breaths whatever is given to you for that per lifetime so the breath friends breath comes from the the along with our soul the prana prana so there are five pranas i told you pancha pranas so prana udana samana apana all this uh, vyana so this all five pranas will come along with your etheric body the part of etheric body explain the, the the part of astral body my dear friends so part of astral body i told 19 parts out out of the 19 parts the mind has four parts and then comes to the sensor sense organs are five parts duty organs are five parts and life forces are five life forces are five those life five five forces so with all these things with these 19 parts are there in your astral body when it comes to the physical body my dear friends your physical body is replica of astral body exactly this astral body which is prepared in the higher worlds when it is coming from the causal world then with the causal body then come to astral body astral world to take the astral body the astral body is prepared exactly similar whatever the physical body you want to take in the mother womb see one thing is you try to understand the source of your physical body is not your mother is not your uh, so called you know the food and what what are what are the things he takes she may take very good food she may take highest amount of nutrient food my dear friends sometime in the seventh or sixth month of the whatever that uh, garbha will go suddenly the garbha will vanish that means the 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 fetus which is growing somehow it get died inside the stomach itself so that is why do not be confused with the food the nutrient food the kind of a, the great rich life she is leading doesn't matter until unless your astral body decides to come inside sometimes it comes inside fourth or fifth month because of our karma your mother karma and the 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 whatever the so the soul with astral body comes inside because of these two karmas they balance out each other it will only be there up to seventh or eighth month it will die so that kind of experience you want to give it to our mother and also she want you see also on she also got to gone through go through go through that kind of experience this happens sometimes many of the life to you observe this happens keep happening every where here and there it happens because the the karmas what mother has done in the previous life she want to go through that karma she want to go to the negative karma she want to experience that pain 
right so that is how see pay back that karma my dear friends so likewise there are many many mysteries are there so one must un to understand these mysteries you need more sadhana more spiritual wisdom you have to go through swadhyaya sajana sangatya meditation practice and pyramid power try to do all these things my dear friends so what will happen is ultimately the entire the physical body is formed into the mother womb exact replica of your astral body prepared in the astral world the astral world is equipped with all the things my dear friends as i told you your sense organs how the ear should be how the how the ear should be how the eye should be how the nose should be the entire formation of the physical body is prepared very much there that is called group blueprint of your physical body is made up of in the astral world itself in the form of astral body so that means as i told you the all this uh, total 19 parts are equipped or embedded are inserted into your astral blueprint astral blueprint the same the replica comes and keep developing see that's why i'm telling you now before constructing a building what we have we have one blueprint of the plan that means architect architectural one plan it's called blueprint blueprint design will be there with him as per that only will be constructing a building similarly without our astral body blueprint astral body blueprint comes with this 19 parts so a sense organ duty organ life forces and then comes to the um, other uh, parts so whatever you have so these things total 19 parts if you don't have the mind mind also have four parts as i explained you so all these 19 parts are very much inserted into your astral blueprint the same thing comes and exactly uh, you know the replica is going to be developed in the mother womb then you will come out of the mother womb as a physical body by the time you come to come out of physical body somebody will have kidney last one kidney is there second kidney is not there somebody have the limbs are not working or he became a dumb deaf you know that by the time we come out of birth all this is because your astral body is prepared in the causal in the astral world such a way that depend upon your past karmas the uh, masters will decide or you yourself will decide of course with the help of uh, soul guides you want to be born as a deaf then what will happen your eyes will not work your eyes will be never working once you come out of your mother womb so this is the total the mystery of the life my dear friends anyway so i went into the other subject so let's come to this one so you are the uh, what i was trying to say is the holistic lifestyle you have to live in order to have the healthy life my dear friends so try to always understand this sugar the direct sugar you never take it always discard it then go for what is something called that the palm jaggery thati bella thati bella eat the bella that is especially palm jaggery palm jaggery you take it what is there in the palm jaggery palm jaggery you don't have the direct glucose there is something called fructose my dear friends the fructose the fructose will not cause the jump of glucose suddenly into the blood so it is very good and using this uh, palm jaggery you can have the all benefits all benefits the same taste of your the jaggery what you are taking or the sugar what you are taking especially if you take palm jaggery for 6 weeks 6 weeks i am telling you your anemia will be reduced anemia will be completely removed if somebody is suffering from anemia thati bella that is the palm jaggery you eat just eat for one one piece you know the for uh, about 6 uh, weeks that's all so your complete anemia will be completely removed my dear friends so the main problem comes here is the accumulation of the glucose accumulation of the more and more glucose into the blood stream is not at all good is not recommended by taking the sugar the first thing first and foremost thing will happen that only what happen one tea or coffee or you take cool drink many people you know they are fond of cool drinks so they are you know the aerated drinks so if they take one cool drink i am telling you sudden jump of 150 grams will happen into the blood where do you spend this are you doing physical work are you doing any machinery work or carpentry work or what are you doing it you are happily sitting and working with a mental you know you are using mind and working my dear friends how do you spend this much this much uh, sudden gush of the sudden rush of this glucose you can't spend it when it can't spend it what happen your liver and you know the your liver and kidneys and uh, especially your liver and pancreas uh, they forget their uh, activities what they do what they have to do they are supposed to do inside the body they forget that activities they take all this excess glucose existing in the blood stream they collect it they they convert it to triglycerides and fats and they go on paste it at different parts of the body that what it becomes obesity a lot of people suffer suffering from the obesity nowadays because of this excess glucose so try coming try coming out of this my dear friends 
same time excess consumption of the uh, rice excess consumption of the wheat this also causes for excess amount of glucose sudden rush into your blood try to go with the millet food uh, all these like you know very fiber fiber food where it doesn't generate the excess amount of glucose it generates what is the required amount of glucose time to time it will be keep generating then your body will be always healthy friends this is what the thing then let's go to the mudra therapy so mudra therapy you will have would like to discuss about uh, diabetic mudra and the blood pressure mudra today so i will try i will I just give a mudra so explanation of those mudras already i have done it but i would like to emphasize on the diabetic mudra today so that you know what will happen you can anybody suffering or your near near and dear ones are suffering give this uh, this mudra also as a part of their schedule or their daily routine along with the walking along with the holistic food along with this uh, mudra slowly they can easily come out of it very powerful mudras my friends so diabetic is diabetic mudra can be controlled very well and keep it in your under your control great control with the help of practicing apana mudra followed by prana mudra what is apana mudra see it. just observe the formation of mudra apana mudra so this is the fingertips of your space element and your middle finger pink finger okay so these two these two much be touched. Prithvi element, space element. Both tips of those, that particular thing, touching with the, the thumb, the tip of the thumb, my dear friends. The both hands you have to practice. So this Apana Mudra. Apana Mudra must be practiced for 50 minutes. This Mudra must be practiced with the, both the fingers for 50 minutes in one go. If you can't practice in one go, you can practice in three times in a day, 15-15 minutes each. And followed by Prana Mudra, Prana Mudra also must be practiced for minimum to minimum 15 minutes, my friends. So, what is Prana Mudra? This is a Prana Mudra. See here. This is Prana Mudra. Prana Mudra, you are touching the space element and water element, the tip of that uh, two fingers with the tip of the thumb. So, gentle touch. This is Prana Mudra. Prana Mudra followed by your Apana Mudra. Apana Mudra 15 minutes at one shot. Otherwise, 15 minutes each, three times, and then this prana mudra at a time 15 minutes or three times five, five minutes. So, this is the effective mudra to control, keep it under under your control, the diabetes, especially diabetes, my dear friends. Then blood pressure, it may be low blood pressure, high blood pressure. So, it doesn't matter. Try to go with the Vyana Mudra. Vyana Mudra plus Apana Mudra. What is Vyana Mudra? Try to observe this index finger and middle finger. Space element, air element. Vayu, Vay Tattva. This uh, middle one is Akash Tattva. These two fingers touching gently with the thumb. This is called Vyana Mudra. Vyana Mudra. Okay, try to understand. Vyana Mudra. This controls Vyana Vayu. Vyana Pranic Force. This controls. So that it will keep your blood pressure. Why the pressure happens? Because of the excess amount of Vayu. So try to see this. So this is how this is how this mudra is practiced. This is called Vyana Mudra for 50 minutes, my dear friends. Then followed by your Prana Mudra. Prana Mudra is this. Followed by again 15 minutes of your Prana Mudra. So this will solve your blood pressure. Friends. So try to understand why blood pressure will happen when the Vayu. See, this is air, air element. The air element is excess, the space element. The space element and wear element, so these two gets more and more excessive. Then what will happen is in your arteries, your blood arteries, your heart, heart, the arteries and veins which are connected to the uh, heart, what will happen is the pressure will increase. So because of the imbalance of air, imbalance of akasha tattva. So this is how the, the imbalance of these two elements, we are connecting to agni. Agni means agni tattva. We are connecting and balancing them. By balancing this, these two elements within your body, that means within your, uh, these artery pipes, wind pipe, especially artery pipes. Artery pipes, you are trying to control the space element and the air element. Then what will happen is your blood pressure, obviously it will be controlled, it will be reduced, my dear friends. So this is what about the today's mudra therapy. So let's have some questions and sharing of your experiences. Yes. So, anybody is having questions, please ask. Out of the today's subject. 
and share your experience also. Right, Ashok Babu sir. Sir, good morning, sir. Good morning, good morning. Sir, uh, today's uh, topics was excellent, sir. Yes. I never, I never knew. But yes. uh, we were, uh, we were getting to your uh, the concept. Yeah. We will definitely going to reach ultimate, sir. Mm -hmm. So that is what a human tendency and human uh, life. Mm -hmm. uh, that's all. Uh, whatever you explained, it was. Uh, uh, exactly correct, sir. Mm. But uh, we are not uh, uh, concentrating uh, towards habituate uh, these uh, awareness. Yes. yes. Uh, if we have habituate of this awareness, self-awareness, so uh -huh. we, we will go into see poor loka, super loka. Um, yes. There are so many, no, sir. Over the Sahastrara, there are so many lokas. I never knew. Simply elders were saying, I am listening. In the law, in the olden days when I was a child. Right. And now, this consciousness, nobody is saying, sir, anywhere. Right. So, this is a very uh, difficult, uh, difficult to understand. We, one must practice and keep listening always. Uh, yes, sir. Uh -huh. In that, uh, in that uh, consciousness. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. True, sir. True, sir. It was excellent, sir. Your presentation, good. And uh, we have to inculcate, sir, because you are taking so much of risk. To yeah. educate uh, through the real life uh, into, I yeah. very much grateful to you, sir. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you, thank you. The uh, the the, the, the uh, sugar you were explained that is true, and uh, mudra you were explained uh, that is lifetime uh, medicine, sir. Whatever you are explaining, <laughs> those mudras, it's nothing but sir. In in America, in uh, all other uh, foreign countries, they're using as medicine as a uh, yoga. Yeah, definitely. But yeah. here, <laughs> we mm. never, uh, sir, we are never aware, never thinking yes. on and bought up from India. But uh, people see, sir, how carelessly yes. um, people so are maybe, taking. No, like we are and, forgetting our uh, Sanatan Dharma, our uh, Sanatan ancient Sanatan methods. Yeah. Yes, we are sir. And uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. of course, you are all uh, little conscious people. You came here. Otherwise, you know, yes. you are not ending, ending up here. You will yeah, never yes, up here. You will, you will ah, always sir. end up in uh, some kind of a... Yeah. Very mundane ah, practices and then go to ah, hospitals, ah. all these things. Right, sir. Uh -huh. Is it, sir? So you're all uh -huh. very conscious people yeah. and uh, fortunate yeah. people to come into these yeah. kind of platforms. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir, thank, thank, you. thank you very much, sir. I am very much thankful to uh, Patriji and you and your PSSM, the whole group, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank, thank Have you. a nice day, sir. Thank you, sir. And yes. Uh... Namaste, sir. Namaste. Uh, so very, very nicely you have explained about uh, seven chakras and the characters of the seven chakras, everything, sir. Very nice, sir. Um, but one thing, sir, uh, how to activate our chakras? That one, if you teach, it will be more uh, benefit for us. No, actually, ma, I'll tell you, there is no method to activate the chakras. See, I, okay. uh, all chakras, I named as chakras, but in okay. my concept of uh, understanding and the spiritual actual spiritual understanding of each chakra is it is your state of mind okay oh, yes. your state of mind but and your okay. state of evolution of a soul like what okay. are the different qualities you have within you for example you are with a tamoguna okay mm -hmm. you are with a tamoguna you are just taking care of your taking care of your family you don't need you don't you never try to understand or learn something new then what will happen is you are perfectly the Muladhar Chakra. You are base rooted. You are rooted in the okay. physical life. That's all. Okay. okay. Understand? Okay. So that is why the question of activating the chakras, nothing, there is nothing such a practice, but it will be activated on its own by regular practice of meditation. What will happen is regular, that practice, practice, of? Of, regular practice of meditation and spiritual wisdom. Okay. okay. You okay. start learning, that is, that is how you uh, pass through all the chakras. What will happen is chakras are there. Let's say <coughs> chakras, we call them as energy centers within our yeah. so-called our own pranic body, our own energy body. So you call them as a seven chakras, for example, right? Yeah. So yeah. we call them seven chakras, seven energy centers where the energy will be whirling and circulating. All this will explain. But ultimately, yeah. so in the energy body, there are 72,000 nadis are there. So these nadis are interlinked. They are connected to each other. 
okay mm-hmm. and there are certain centers for example muladhara that means at the base then comes to the you know in between that is swadhisthana then comes to the nagal that is manipura then comes to heart level that is anatha then comes to visuddha that is a throat then it comes to the the uh, the eyebrows that is between the eyebrows that comes to pineal gland and pituitary gland that is the place where uh, this agna chakra then goes to top of the head brahmarandra that is sahasra chakra that is where the cosmic energy enters during meditation but what happens all about these things so physically there are of course these are the centers where lot of energy will be uh, concentrated okay these are the centers okay. especially you see navel chakra that is manipurak chakra manipurak chakra navel that is a portion of navel what you see from this point only the astral body gets released all the time in the sleep in the during meditation these two times what happen and even the when the death happens continue the complete the death happens what happen from this navel chakra one particular one particular the the cord is there that's called silver cord this cord we call it as a the a silver cord the silver cord always you know gets connected whenever during the sleep during the meditation what happens in these two times the silver cord will be extending from the physical body wherever the astral body goes out right during the dream dreamless sleep you your astral body gets released from you and it goes to all the different lokas meeting different people all that becomes as a like a, sometimes some people will remember as their dreams some people cannot remember anything so just they come out of the sleep and they'll be quite neutral but what happens is during the sleep this astral body gets released from the navel that is a manipurak chakra that point from that point so this gets released and goes out and then but the silver cord is connected otherwise the moment the silver cord by any chance the silver cord is cut what happens that some people will be sleeping sleeping then it, they also die the sleep itself the reason is the astral yeah. the silver cord which gets connected to the astral body goes out no so that cord should not be cut off it should be always connected yes for any anybody anybody who is having a life span on this earth planet it will not be cut off that such easily okay try to understand it doesn't cut off so then you will come back in the dream dream after the dream is over after sleep is over you will come back to your physical body again your astral body get gets into the physical body to stay with that same way in the meditation what happen consciously when we are sitting in meditation having lot of lot of our cosmic energy activate your astral body that means through our lot of amount of cosmic energy comes inside your astral body gets rotated then slowly slowly it gets released it goes out of your uh, physical body again you can visit all the higher frequency worlds at that point of time that is how all the yogi all your great yogis and rishis have visited the all other planets and galaxies they define navagrahas thousand thousands of years ago not after the telescope came the telescope came as a part of science and technology we just re uh, that's called discovery we have done we have not invented anything okay the invention nothing happened with the telescope all these nine planets nine planets as navagrahas are described by vedas our ancient scriptures very very thousand thousands of years ago yugas okay so that's how all these great rishis they go on, they go and see all the planets galaxies they travel with their astral body that the power of human being my dear friends so that is why we are a spiritual being we are just living here temporarily and we go back that is why we are very powerful we have everything inside us there is nothing lacking within us you are you are directly you are a god itself you are the god that's all nothing else why do you want to experience god my dear friends you don't need to experience god you just you are just lead your life successfully joyfully blissfully that itself is a god nothing else okay you will be always healthy that's why i'm trying to say say chakras need not to be activated if you live your life all this spiritual life and having good meditation sadhana with you then your chakras and your gunas will be go on enrich that means you all your bonus gunas arishad vargas go on enrich then obviously all the chakras will be keep working will be traveling from muladhara to the sahasrara a enlightened person enlightened soul can travel from sahasrara to the muladhara many of the people many of the lower evolved people like uh, just uh, a mundane physical people what happen they will be operating with between the so physical uh, this muladhara and swadhisthana max max they come up to the this uh, this was so called manipuraka manipuraka otherwise they always will be lying and see, sleeping eating dying you know all this uh, fighting everything happen be- between these two chakras only all their lifetime like maybe 60 70 lives we don't know 
All depends upon is your free will, my dear friends. Yes. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. And then one yes. more thing, sir. Um, yeah. Sugar, uh, we should not take. Uh, and jaggery also, you should not take. Today only I come to know. Uh, yeah. I was, I, I'm not using sugar, but jaggery, uh, since uh, five, six years, continuously I am using. But yeah. what we have to use for the sweetness? Sweetness, use uh, palm jaggery. That's all. Palm jaggery. Okay. Mm -hmm. Palm jaggery okay. is the best one. You get in the good organic shops. Okay, sir. That one only. Even though if we prefer whatever we prefer, we have to use with the palm jaggery. Yes, yes, yes. Otherwise, what happens? Okay. See, I'll tell you, you, even you take a sugar, uh, sorry, sugar cane uh, jaggery also. Okay. Okay. So, okay. in that also, uh, the glucose, uh, lot of amount of uh, the glucose, that is, Whatever sugar you are eating, that is sugar cane jaggery you are eating, directly it gets converted into glucose and enter into your, enter into your blood immediately. Okay, sir. Okay, it sir. But this time. is, I was thinking jaggery is good. Sh no. Sugar is bad, I don't, I know. But yeah. jaggery is good, I thought. But sugar, is bad for, sugar is bad for many reasons. Not only the glucose, amount of glucose uh, jumping in, uh, the okay. rushing of glucose, not only that, sugar is having a lot of other chemicals added. Oh yes, sir. While yeah. Twenty-one chemicals they will add while, tre while treating and treatment of uh, this uh, sugar cane into the sugar white sugar. Okay. They add about twenty-one chemicals. Oh my God! In <laughs> fact, you know many of the people they eat sugar. Even the vegetarian people, I am telling, I am just warning them. So they okay. think that uh, this is a vegetarian food. It's a non-vegetarian. They add lot of uh, the uh, bones, bones uh, getting this. Uh, whitishness and all these things while treating uh, treating this uh, cane with sugar they use uh, the bones uh, you go to the sugar factory you'll have a lot of smell bad smell okay okay yeah okay. so okay. what will happen is i'll tell you anybody who is use, using sugar go to the sugar factory then next day you will stop using sugar anybody <laughs> who is eating with eating non vegetarian uh, what you do is you take one uh, hen or chicken take one uh, knife you cut the knife you cut the chicken Yourself. Don't buy from somewhere. Don't buy from somewhere. Take one knife, cut the cut the chicken or a hen or whatever. Take take in your own hands, cut it, and then you prepare it. Prepare the plus, then you cook it. From next day, you'll stop stop doing it. Stop eating non-vegetarian itself, friends. God's grace, we are pure vegetarian. But sir, we are telling vegetarian, but. What happens on uh, yeah, if, if any birthday or any function means cake we are eating in the cake, uh, egg is there. So that and all I won't bother that much indirectly we are taking, uh, but uh, totally we have to avoid, no sir? Yes, <laughs> definitely, no doubt. No. Yeah. Anything yeah. like this, uh, just don't take it, that's all. Because yeah, see, yeah. You, want to, <clears throat> you want to evolve spiritually, okay? When you want to evolve spiritually, eat the food with the consciousness, the fresh and okay. pure consciousness. Okay, sir. Why do you eat uh, some food which is having dead consciousness? Um, yes. Already the brutahara, that is a brutahara. It's already dead. There is no consciousness okay. within that. Okay. And you are okay. eating that, you become that. The food what you become, the food what you eat, you become that. Yes, yeah. Yes, yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. So, yes. See, Laura? Right. Uh, very good morning, sir. Good morning. Yeah, all the topics were uh, very nice, sir. So, I am not able to do the meditation today. So, because kids were... Uh, Started to just I was listening uh, all your uh, guidance. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this is the higher form of spiritual wisdom. Now it's difficult to understand in one class. In fact, I need to take seven bodies one class, seven chakras one class, seven uh, lokas one class. Okay. Mm -hmm. I try to cover within the one class. For me also, it is a uh, Difficult to cover those those many things in one class. Embedding in one class is difficult, but we tried we try to do that. 
Yes, sir. Amazing knowledge, sir. You are say, sharing. Uh, really, we are appreciating you. You are sharing all these things. We will never get it. <laughs> these things, uh, these type of knowledge anywhere, sir. If you want to sit and read, it will take a lot of time, sir. Yes. Within a few, uh, like, a few hours, you are sharing lifetime uh, knowledge, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Sumangala, madam. Right. Yes. Yes, friends. We'll be closing the session now. Thank you once again. Thanks for joining the session and thanks for giving the opportunity for Mother Foundation. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. We are blessed to be a student yes. and connected with you. Thank you.